Hi, I'm Jill Bolduc, and welcome to my video on bacteriophage. Bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacteria. That means that they're going to use bacteria as a host to make more copies of them. Bacteriophage were first discovered in 1915 by Frederick Twart, a British bacteriologist. At the time, Twart was a superintendent of the Brown Animal Sanatory Institution, which is a veterinary research center located in London, England. The story has it that in 1914, Twart was working on ways to grow the vaccinia virus using artificial media. At the time, vaccinia virus was harvested from the skin of calves to be used as the major component for the production of smallpox vaccine. But because the crude growing conditions that were used, the vaccine was almost always contaminated with bacteria. Twart hypothesized that these bacteria could contain the secret ingredients that he needed to grow the virus in the lab. To test his theory, Twart spread some of the smallpox vaccine onto these nutrient agar plates and then incubated them. Not surprisingly, he reported seeing lots of bacterial growth on his plates. When Twart examined his plates using a magnifying glass, he saw tiny glassy areas that were void of bacterial growth, which today we call plaques. He soon discovered that these plaques contained dead bacteria. Twart also found that he could transfer the unknown plaque forming agents from one bacterial culture to another. Thus, he called the unknown agents bacteriolytic agents. Two years later, a French-Canadian microbiologist by the name of Félix Durel reported similar observations. Durel claimed that the lytic agents present in plaques were biological organisms that required bacteria to grow, and thus he called them bacteriophage, by combining the words bacteria and phagin. Phagin is a Greek word that means to devour or to eat. Today we simply call them phage. At this point, the world will have to wait 22 years later in order to see the first images of bacteriophage using the newly invented electron microscope. Today, more than 5,000 different types of bacteriophages have been identified with only a fraction of these being extensively studied. From what we know so far, these bacteriophage infect either a single bacterial host or a select few. So in either case, they are bacterial species specific, which is the basis for phage therapy, which is a subject of another video. All the bacteriophages are currently classified into 19 different families. Their genomes consist of either DNA or RNA, with the majority of them being DNA. In fact, only two of the 19 families have RNA genomes. The genomes are either double-stranded or single-stranded, and their capsids consist of icosahedral heads with or without tails, or they are filamentous. Five families are known to have members that have envelopes surrounding their nucleocapsids. So like other viruses, bacteria bacteriophage are very diverse in their morphology. The most studied bacteriophage are the T phages. These viruses infect Escherichia coli, and they have a double-stranded DNA genome that's packaged inside an icosahedron head. It has a tail section with six tail fibers, and they're non-enveloped. They're given the names T1 through T7. Based on what we know so far of the different bacteriophages, the virus must first make contact with the bacterial cell that has the right receptors on its surface. This is called the attachment step, and, is de and decides whether the bacteriophage can infect the host or not. A free-moving virus will move randomly until their tail, tail fibers will come in contact and bind to the bacterial receptor. These receptors can be gram-negative or gram-positive cell wall components, a capsular polysaccharide, a pilus, or a flagella. Next, the virus will react by contracting its tail, 
pushing its tail pins through the bacterial cell membrane and injecting its DNA inside the cell like a syringe. This is called the entry step. Once inside the cytoplasm, the bacteriophage's DNA will immediately circularize upon itself and marks the beginning of the biosynthesis step. The viral genes are transcribed by the host's RNA polymerase and the host's ribosomes will help translate this information to make bacteriophage capsid components. At the same time, the host's DNA polymerase uses the phage DNA as a template to make more copies of the phage genome. During this time, the host's resources, meaning its amino acids, nucleic acids, enzymes, energy, etc., are mainly used to make more bacteriophage components. These components are then self-assembled in what's known as the assembly step inside the cytoplasm. This process can generate anywhere between 50 to 200 new bacteriophage particles. And at one point, the bacterial cell becomes so weak that it will erupt, releasing the newly formed particles, and the cycle continues when these new particles attach to their next bacterial hosts. What I've just described to you is the lytic cycle of bacteriophage. Let's take a closer look at bacteria during the late biogenesis, biosynthesis and the early assembly stage. At this time, the bacterial cell has used up most of its resources to manufacture the hundreds of tiny virus particles and it will start to program itself to shut down and die. This process is called apoptosis. One outcome of apoptosis is the fragmentation of the chromosomal DNA. This means that the DNA strands will be digested into smaller pieces. So while the new bacteriophages are assembling, the cytoplasm will have two sources of double-stranded DNA for it, for the phage to package. One will be the newly made phage genome, and the second is the fragmented host chromosomal DNA. Because some of the newly formed bacteriophage particles will contain bacterial DNA packaged in its capsid head instead of phage DNA, as shown here, this will lead to a form of host DNA transfer that we call general transduction. The term transduction simply means the transfer of DNA from one host to another. In this case, the first host just released a new phage particle containing host DNA. This form of transduction is called general transduction because any pieces of the host's fragmented DNA could have been packaged inside the newly, newly made phage. Thus, it's not specific to any given region of the host's DNA. When this phage eventually attaches and injects its DNA load into a new host, it will complete the process of general transduction. So let's compare the two bacteriophage. The one with viral phage DNA versus the one that contains bacterial host DNA. A virion is a virus that's capable of, infect of infecting a host cell. Both phages are infectious and therefore they are both virions. Now, can they make more phage particles? Well, only the phage DNA that has has the genes that are necessary to instruct the host cell to make more phage particles. Thus, the phage with the host DNA lacks these genes and the phage production ceases. Can, transfer, can it transfer host DNA from one host to another? Well, only the phage with the host DNA can transfer host DNA. Thus, general transduction is only occurs with newly made phage particles that transfer random pieces of host DNA to the new host cell. Besides the lytic cycle, phage also have a lysogenic cycle. In this case, the attachment and entry stages remain the same, but instead of the DNA circularizing on itself, it will insert itself inside the new host's chromosome. This bacteriophage DNA is now called a prophage to denote the fact that it has become part of the host chromosome and it's no longer independent. 
As this bacterial cell grows and divides by binary fission, fission, the phages will replicate along with the host chromosome, and in this case, thousands if not millions of new bacterial cells will be made, which will also contain the prophage as part of their chromosomes. During this time, not one new virus particle is made, and the host cells are completely normal and healthy. At one point, though, an environmental stimulus will induce the host to remove the prophage from its chromosome and revert it back to its circular independent form. At this point, the prophage ceases to exist. And this will mark the end of the lysogenic cycle with the beginning of a new ly lytic cycle. Now, this diagram shows a nice clean removal of the prophage from the host's chromosome. That means that the newly circularized independent phage DNA only contains phage DNA. But there are times when the prophage exits the chromosome, taking with it some small pieces of host DNA with it. In this case, it can only take host DNA that flanks on either side of the prophage. This removal of the host DNA results in specialized transduction. Again, specialized because only DNA that flanks the prophage can be removed and transferred to a new host. Soon after the phage DNA circularizes, the host will enter the biosynthesis, biosynthesis step by making phage components. These components come together, as shown before, to make 50 to 200 new viral particles. But the difference in this case is that all the phage particles will contain a piece of host DNA packaged inside their capsid heads. These new phage particles are released and they eventually infect other host cells and deliver their DNA. Either a new lytic cycle or a lysogenic cycle will occur. And if a lysogenic cycle occurs, then the transfer host DNA will insert it itself, itself into the new host chromosome. So as generalized transduction is associated with the lytic cycle, associate specialized transduction with the lytic cycle because it can only occur with the existence of a prophage. It still results in the transfer of DNA from one host cell to another, but in this case, only host DNA that flanks either side of the, of the existing prophage DNA can be transferred to another host cell. This concludes my video on the bacteriophage.